In this video, I'm going to show you how we made a campaign targeting the Inc. 5000 list of companies for 2024 to send emails to them using automated cold email. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, this is going to be a very quick video. I just want to show you guys the exact strategy behind how we did this and why we did this. If you're not familiar with the tools like Swarlead or Clay or any of the other things I'm going to discuss in this video, I would highly recommend also taking a look at some of the other videos on my channel. But I'm just going to assume that the ones watching this video do know what Smart Lead and Clay and all the similar tools are. So let's get into it. Now, first and foremost, I want to explain the logic about why I wanted to target the Inc. 5000. Now, first and foremost, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Inc. 5000, uh, they are a list of the 5000 fastest growing companies in the United States in one given year. So in 2024, there's a list of the Inc. 5000. Those are the 5000 fastest growing companies in 2024 that are based in the USA. OK, now, why does this matter for us? So if you guys don't know, I run a lead generation agency and at the core, our main job is to go and make more people aware of our clients offers right at a core. That is what our service is. Now, our best and our worst performing clients are all sending the same amount of emails. The difference between our best clients who are booking and or booking a prospect every 50 emails and our worst clients who are booking a prospect every 3000 emails is purely offer. We're sending the same emails, we're inboxing the same amount, and we're doing everything the same on our end. It's just that less people are interested in that person's offer, okay? Now, if a company's on the Inc. 5000 list, they obviously have a good offer. And if they have a good offer, then they're consistently able to close the leads and we can safely assume they have product market fit, okay? Now, why do we want clients with product market fit? If our clients have product market fit, it's going to be impossible for us to not go and get results. It's just going to make it super, super simple on us. And if we can get them good results, they're going to be happy clients. We're going to have low churn rates and we're going to have extremely high LTVs. Okay. Cause if we're making you money, there's no, there's no like reason for you to leave us. Okay. And in essence, that's why we decided to target the Inc 5,000. Okay. Now moving forward. The starting point of this campaign was actually going and scraping the Inc 5000. Now to begin with, we needed to export the entire 5000 companies for the 2024 list. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, that list is available publicly on Inc.com. So Inc.com is like, a, I guess, like a journalism company or something like that. Uh, and they have that list on there. Now, what we went ahead and did is we built a scraper for the Inc 5000. So Basically, we went on every single one of those listings, exported all of the information and put them into a Google spreadsheet. OK, now, if any of you guys are looking to run a similar campaign, I'm going to go ahead and include the Inc 5000 list in the description so you guys don't have to do any of this. But this is how it actually looked. It was the company names, the employees, the previous employees, the website, right? A bunch of different data points, which could be very useful if you're doing code outreach. OK, so that was a starting point. Then moving on, we needed to actually go and filter the Inc 5000. Now in this particular, in this particular situation, what we were looking for was companies that have 10 to 50 employees. They needed to be service based businesses and they needed to sell B2B. So 10 to 50 employees, we don't want to be working with any companies that are not that big. I don't even think there were any in that range on the Inc 5000 list, but we applied that filter. Um, obviously they need to be a service based business. That's where we have our best results in selling services. And they need to sell B2B because obviously we only do B2B cold email. Okay. Now what we did is we went ahead and we put this data into Apollo. Now, again, I'm going to assume that you guys know what Apollo is for those of you who don't know in short, it is a lead, I guess, lead database. There's a big, over 300 million B2B prospects on there. Again, I have videos on Apollo, uh, on my channel. So if you are interested in that, then you can take a look, but we put the leads in. We put the companies in, as you can see right here, and for employees, we put the one to 10 and 21 to 50, and then, then all of the other filters that we would need to have one to 50 employees. Okay. Then after applying the head head count filters, we had a list of 5,000 companies being cut down to 2,500 companies. So just those two filters alone, or just that one filter alone, technically head count, um, completely took away half our leads. Okay. Then we took those leads, we exported them and we put them into clay.com. Now, again, I'm going to assume you guys know what clay.com is. For those of you who don't, it is basically a go to market automation software, which helps you personalize outreach at scale. Uh, I know that sounds like a mouthful, but again, I have videos on clay. There's tons of content online. So take a look at those if you're interested. But in essence, I took all of this data, I put it into clay and I ran a couple of automations, right? I needed to figure out whether the business model that this company was partaking in is B2B or B2C. 
I need to figure out whether the offer is a service offer or a product offer. And I need to figure out whether the ideal client profile of the, or who the ideal client profile is of that prospect. Now I'll show you guys the clay table really quickly that I actually built out. So you can have an idea of what that looks like right here. This was the clay table and you can see, for example, this is our first lead, uh, Birch works. They are a BDB business. They provide a service and their ICP is technology companies and talent acquisition teams. Now, all of these data points were fetched completely automatically right in its entirety. So you can see that if I go on this website right now and we actually go on here and we can take a look at them, let's see what their landing page says. Hire AI talent, a niche hiring platform specializing in AI, cyber product data and engineering. Now you guys can understand that this is obviously a B2B company, right? People who, who are selling to consumers or people who, um, like, People selling to consumers don't need to hire AI talent. Consumers don't just go and hire developers, right? This is obviously meant for other businesses. And also you can see that hire AI talent is obviously a service. You can't sell a person. Like you can't sell someone that is good at AI. You can only provide a service to help hire them, right? So it's very clear that this is a B2B service-based business, okay? Then additionally, if you look before, our other field was what kind of ICP do they have? We said that it was technology companies and people who are in charge of talent acquisition. So obviously, if you're looking to hire AI talent, you definitely work at a at some sort of tech company, right? If you own an HVAC company or a storefront, you're not looking to hire AI talent. Then also to even go even more niche down, who are you at that company? You probably have something to do with talent acquisition, right? You're not going to be the one going and hiring talent if you work in marketing, right? That's not your job. So you can see how this, this feature right here, this like column technology companies and talent acquisition teams is very, very accurate because that's exactly who we're looking for. Okay. Now moving on at the end of everything, we had 1,626 companies left, meaning we started with 5,000 companies and now we had only 1,626 companies left. Okay. Then we went and we got decision makers. Now, actually, before, before I go here, I want to just mention one more thing. Think about it right here. Only 32% of our original list actually ended up being relevant, right? Meaning if I were to go and I were to launch this clay campaign without actually verifying anything or without going and checking whether they're B2B or service based businesses, I would be contacting 67% in, re in re irrelevant leads. Meaning if hypothetically speaking, I know I'm going fast here, but hypothetically speaking, if I would have launched this campaign and I would have had a 2% reply rate, right? But 67% of my leads were invalid. Just removing that would have automatically taken me to a 6% reply rate, right? Because we could have just not done all the other 67% and had a much better ratio for, you know, who you'd be contacting. Okay. And as you can see, that's why I decided to use clay here because it made this list just so much more relevant. Now, moving on the next step was getting decision makers. So after applying a custom, a couple of basic job title filters, uh, we ended up getting about 11,109 decision makers. Now, right here in the management level, you can see that I only just put owner, founder, C-suite partner, VP, head director, and manager. In reality, we would definitely go and we would, you know, make this a little bit more detailed just for the sake of the example. That's what I put. But as you can see, you know, we had 11,109 decision makers. Then we went, exported all of this data. We did an SMTP verification using million verifier, and then we enhanced all the company data using the lead Academy tool. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with what lead Academy is long story short, it's my low ticket coaching program for people trying to learn cold email in lead Academy. You get unlimited use to a bunch of different tools. One of them being an AI powered company named formatter. So, you know, not trying to make this a commercial, but that is the tool that we use. And that's the tool that we use for all our campaigns. So that's, ended, that's what we ended up doing. Okay. And after verification, after everything was said and done, we had 6.5 K verified leads. Then we went to the writing scripts phase. Now I'm not going to be reeling the exact scripts we ran just because this campaign is actually still running and it's performing very well, but I am going to give some of ex some ex similar scripts. So you guys can have an idea of what exactly we did. Now keep in mind right now we have the following data points. We have first name, company name, 
company's ideal client profile, the fact they're a part of the Inc. 5000, the fact they sell B2B, and the fact they sell a service. Now, a good example of a script. Now, again, this is just an example. We're not actually running the script. And if we were running the script, we would definitely optimize it more. But just as an example, we could say something like, good afternoon, first name. I saw you were in charge of growth or company name. Congratulations on making it to the Inc. 5000. I was just wondering, why aren't you using an automated code email system to generate more appointments with ideal client profile? We helped redact the case study, get result in time frame. another Inc. 5000 B2B service-based company. Are you keen to hear more? Now, in this situation, we do have a case study with a company that is, in, is on the Inc. 5000. Now, if you're on the Inc. 5000, right, and I mentioned it to another company on the Inc. 5000, that's going to establish a huge sense of authority because they already know that we work with companies similar to their size, okay? Also, they're going to think that this email is completely personal because of the fact that this part is personal, right? And this is kind of the beauty of personalization. You can change up a couple of words and make the entire email seem like it was sent personally, okay? And that's in essence what we were running for the script. It's something very similar, okay? Now, although this campaign is only really going to take us about a week to, to fully send to, because again, it is only like 6,000 leads, we can just go and scrape another year of the Inc. 5000. Keep in mind, this is only the 2024 list. We still have the 2023 list. We still have the 2022, 2021, 2020, and so on, okay? So, and again, we have the tool to already scrape this data, so it's just a matter of choosing a different year, okay? So, hope that was useful for you guys. I know I went over a lot of material, but of course, that's just... The, the raw reality, there's a lot of different steps here to go and make a campaign like this. But before you go, I do want to mention, if you are a B2B service-based business and you are already doing over 20K a month in revenue and you want to scale using code email, but you don't want to figure out all this stuff on your own, then just please consider applying to work with us. Now, real quick, the process is simple. You just book a 30-minute free outbound audit. We're going to go on this outbound audit. We're going to determine whether we can even target who it is you sell to. Okay, we want to make sure that's even possible. We want to talk about how we can effectively target them, how we can effectively say something that they're interested in. And we want to talk about whether we've ever done this before. And if we have, we'll show you what we did for that person. Okay. Now, if it makes sense for us to give you an offer, we will. If it doesn't, then you just get free 30 minutes of coaching, which keep in mind, other people pay money for. Um, so with that being said, if you are interested, you can book a call below. If you end up getting a free coaching, you're in the green. If we end up working together, you'll definitely be in the green. So either way, it is an opportunity worth considering. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.